So you're considering starting to paint with oil paint and you don't know where to start? Well, I'm here to show you exactly the stuff that you'll need to start oil painting. Hi, my name is Armida. This is me and welcome to my channel. I am a cloudscape, cityscape oil painter. Behind me is some of my work and this is my studio. And I've been painting for uh, I think six to seven years, or oil painting specifically, six to seven years. I've been painting with acrylics for probably 10 years, maybe more than that. And with oil painting, it can be a little confusing on how to start, especially now. Acrylic paint seems to be like the main paint to get started with and like basically water-based paints but I really love oil painting it's just got like a different like fun like texture to it and I love that it slowly dries over time uh, yeah so today I'm going to show you everything that you'll need to start oil painting I'm gonna go in order of basically important so most important thing first let's get started so firstly you'll need something to paint on the classic thing that you would first think of would be canvas i have right here i have right here an unopened already pre-made stretched canvas this one is 20 by 30 inches and yeah you can get this at any art supply store this one is already pre-stretched this one's basically ready to to have paint put on but you, you don't need to paint on on canvas specifically you could paint on wood basically but all it really the main thing is that it has to be the the surface has to be primed and prepared for oil paint if it is not prepared properly then the oil oil paint the way that it is it will not dry See, I recommend canvas because it's lightweight and you can still make it like nice and smooth if you like that texture by getting like some sandpaper and sanding down the layer of primer on it. While we're talking about a surface to paint on, probably canvas, I, I think from here on out I will just say canvas uh, as the thing that you're going to be painting on even though you don't, you don't have to do canvas, there are a couple other options. Adjacently, you would need to have something to hold hold your canvas on. So I here have a nice beautiful wooden easel. She stands up on her own. Look at that. Look at her standing up on her own. But you don't need to go out of your way and buy a, a nice beautiful expensive easel like this. Really all you need is to have something to you just need the source image to be parallel to your eyesight i do not recommend painting on a flat table surface kind of like what i got right here like that this, this is just a this is a plain old old table i don't recommend painting flat like this because the table is perpendicular to you and your eyesight so stuff can get warped it can get like lost in translation if you will from your eyes to your hand to the table because it is like stretching Stuff can get lost in translation from your eyes to your hand to the to the table because it's like the image would therefore be stretching away from you as opposed to just being standstill right in front of you. So if you only have like tables to you or even a floor, <laughs> like even if you don't have tables, then just like anything, like a box just to prop up your, your canvas so that it is at the same eye level as you. Like even if it's just like slightly a little bit at a 45 degree angle maybe a little bit higher if you can't if you can yeah you don't need to have anything too fancy years ago I would literally just like prop it up some furniture if I didn't have the the proper furniture for it I have seen some people hang up their canvas on a wall properly so it doesn't fall down and just paint it on that way you could you could even do that if you have the means to it that way it is like at eye level to you the only negative side effect to that is that the it really can't move so if you if you want to sit you want to stand it's it's not going anywhere so it, it can't can't move i would say the real pro of having an easel is that you can move it around side to side but the the biggest pro is that you can work basically on anything of any size because the lower the, the 
the support beam down here can go, the bigger a canvas it can hold because you know this top part stretches up that and then that part you can fixate it down. That's that's the real pro. So that means like yeah, bigger canvases you can hold on a on a wooden easel or you can be sitting or standing. I know me, I like to I like to sit and I like to stand <laughs> while while painting. You can have a lot of energy painting while standing. You can like move you know with your whole body because like painting can really be like a full I was gonna say workout but just like a full like mind and body thing where you can move around and standing really helps that or it can be like something real focused and meticulous and you might need to be you might want to like sit for that okay well next if you're gonna oil paint then you need paints of course so I think the next important thing would be oil paint so I'm going to show you my little stash of oil paints right here that I keep in my desk welcome to my dirty dirty glass desk that I have here that I keep all my oil paints in this wonderful little drawer right here. I really recommend Winsor Newton. Here's a good look at what the, the label looks like. So you can look for it in your art supply store. I have all artists grade. You'll see student grade oil paints, which are cheaper. Actually, I don't think Winsor Newton, it says student grade, but it is student grade. I think the artist grade says artists on it and it's like mostly white with just the little swatch of what the oil paint will look like at the, the bottom. Have I might actually have an accidental... Oh yeah, here it is. Okay, I lied. I do have one tube of student grade tube. So this is what student grade looks like with it's like with the metal, you know, silver looking top and then the the bottom is the the color of what the tube looks like. And the real difference between student grade and artist grade is that in student grade there is less of the pigment, you know, like right here it says cobalt blue, you know, this is cobalt blue, which is not a cheap pigment. And if I were to buy the student grade version of this, it would have less of the expensive pigment in more like mediums fixins kind of th think of it as like watered down versions of paint it's just that's just what it is you might be like oh I'm just starting out what do I need to buy these really expensive paints I mean if you want the paints to last you in the long run but if you're a real cheap cheapy cheapy and whatever I say doesn't mean anything to you then I guess I guess go for it I think it's I think these are a good investment yeah it's all about like if you think it's gonna be a good investment you know that's about it so if you're like like, oh, what, Armida, you have so many paints. Look at all these paints. What paints should I get if I'm starting out? Well, if you're barely, barely starting out with oil paints or maybe just painting in general, I really recommend a nice, like, natural, earthy toned palette to start you off because those pigments are usually cheaper because they're natural, made in nature, as opposed to man-made, chemically made stuff that's more expensive, like this cobalt turquoise light. This is really this is really good for my rainbow sunsets that I usually do But I have grown this collection of oil paint over many many years You know, I, I didn't just like buy all these tubes overnight definitely start you off with some browns like a, a raw umber and then its sister burnt umber burnt umber oh yeah raw umber burnt umber there is a slight difference to the two so i really recommend it and then of course burnt sienna is a beautiful like oranges maybe slightly brown color and here's raw sienna which is more of a yellow but again these are like earthy colors not very expensive but very good if you're doing like maybe portraits this this palette would be really good like real like natural portraits Okay, so yeah, that would be some browns with like some orangey, orangey bits, maybe like a greener browns, you know. If you want a yellow, I recommend Indian yellow. It's slightly more expensive yellow. This one's so old. I, I just bought a new tube the other day. I'm so sorry. Yeah, this one's slightly more expensive, but I really recommend it. And if you really need a red, I uh, recommend... Allures in Crimson Series 2, so a little bit more expensive. And then a blue, which I would recommend French Ultramarine Blue. Again, Series 2, but if you're gonna have a blue, red, and a yellow, I recommend these three. And then if you're feeling really crazy, I'd recommend a black also to add to your, your pigments, but like really, I, I, I don't recommend using too much black. So either an ivory black, if you, this one's more of a a cooler toned black ivory black which is a series one so it's on the cheaper side there you go or if you got the money for it Mars black I really like this black which is a series two which is slightly more expensive and then last but definitely not least the most important you need a white 
So I recommend getting like, if you can, a nice big tube of titanium white. This is the white that I use 99% of the time. I very rarely use zinc white or anything else like that. So yeah, this is everything that I suggest that you get, which, you know, these brownie, brown colors, nice earthy tones, and then a blue, a red, and a yellow. And then if you're feeling crazy, maybe another black. And then definitely, of course, you need a white. So yeah, this is a palette that I would definitely recommend that you that this would be the first thing you get. It shouldn't be too expensive. And then you can really work from there, really seeing what other colors that you like to work with. Because, you know, when I started off in college and I had to get oil paints, I think these were basically some of the first colors that I got. Well, actually, I think they also made me get phthalo blue, but big, big warning on this a tiny tiny bit of phthalo blue the rest of these are very earthy tones you can probably just figure it out by hand how strong and pigmented they are but phthalo blue is very very strong but if you're gonna be painting a sky you know like a blue a bluey sky then phthalo blue is your buddy there it's got to have a warning this is very important but yeah like I said if you want to phthalo blue but this is I think one of the more expensive series right here it says series three but this is not Winter and Newton because I bought this like a million years ago so this is before I got Windsor and Newton so yeah that's what the, some paints that I would suggest so next let's talk about brushes I, I have talked about like the type of brushes I use I get Princeton velvet touch brushes they're the the kind with the red handle that's the the kind that I get but really you can use any brushes if you go to the art supply store they will have brushes that say oil paint acrylic paint watercolor but really you can use any brushes if you like the feel of them if you like you know touch them with your hands if you like the, the texture because you know soft brushes will give a different feel than like really rough brushes you will get more texture with each stroke you know that's really the real difference so as long as you properly clean your brushes you can really use anything you know I've seen many people use watercolor brushes for oil because um, watercolor brushes are nice really soft because they really want to absorb water the bristles for watercolor yeah so not much I could really say you can really get anything as long as you you like the the texture the feel of them then that's the kind to get I mean it's always good to get one of different size I mean you can see right here I have a lot of smaller brushes if when I work big I really just need a big brush you know just like one big brush you know this big guy for a really really big canvas so that's brushes and I, I think because we just talked about brushes we probably should talk about washing brushes before you actually wash wash your brushes you'll want to you'll first want to like rinse them and this this is this thing is so gross <laughs> but you want to wa rinse them first in turpentine which I'll show you what a container of uh, turpenoid oh my gosh before you actually wash your brushes with soap you want to like rinse them like kind of like a rinsey rinse but for oil paint with terpenoid, preferably odorless terpenoid, just because it, it does have a smell. So if you have your container open, then it can smell all chemically in the studio. So yeah, you'll need a container of uh, terpenoid. I've had this this container for a good long bit and I just refill it in my, my little thing. This is my thing that I use to wash my brushes. When you go to the art supply store, it will be clear. You know, this is just from, you know, you know me, I paint all the time, every single week. So Oh, it, it's just collected a ton of like gross oil paint over the years. It's a glass container um, you, you don't have to you don't have to get one that's glass I think they might have like different materials, but it has a metal coil inside it may mine is so disgusting and gross Maybe I can find a, a, a new <laughs> new uh, photo of uh, what a new one looks like for you And then you basically get your brush and then stick it in there into the coils Basically loosen up the oil paint that's on your brush. That's why I say it's kind of like a a rinse that's like the closest thing that I could compare it to is like you're kind of rinsing it first before you actually use the soap to, to clean it off and so that's why you need terpenoid because water you know water and oil do not mix so water will not work if you're if you're used to acrylics so yeah terpenoid and then uh, to actually wash your brushes you'll need oil based soap so here I have Murphy's oil soap and I've, ha I've literally had this container for years and like look how I'm barely getting down to like the bottom of it and so really all you need to do is get your brush 
you know, open this up. I, I really just like dip my, like the tip of the brush into the, the oil soap and then you just like scrub it on your hand. I get like the brush. It's hard, it's hard to do this because I'm holding the microphone <laughs> and just so I can, I can show you, give, give you an idea what, what you're supposed to do. Dip it in the soap and then over water, you just rinse your little soap. Me personally, because I'm worried about the pipes of my apartment, I have like a cup or you can even use like a bucket, I guess, just like something you don't care about to have the, the drippings of the oil paint into. Cause I'm worried about like the paint that's on the brush getting into the pipes of the apartment. That, that's just what I do. I have, I keep like cups, <laughs> I keep solo cups of like the dirty paint water and I, I keep them like where no one will go. And so when the, and then the water dries up and then all that's left is the painty, the painty goop. So that's what I Next, what is very important is having proper lighting for your paint. Basically, you want the painting and your paints to be in good, like, natural daylight lighting. If you cannot afford, let's say, a lamp with daylight light bulbs like I do, let me, let me show you what I, what I mean. I got, I got this baby, you see? It's like big old stand-up thing with like a clip on it and I can move this up. Sorry, <laughs> it's a little heavy for my, my non-dominant hand. Got the, the, the light, the daylight light bulb in it. And so if I'm working big, working small, I can move it up and down. It can, and I put it next to the easel where I'm working. So it's got, see, it's got nice, good lighting in it. So I can work at night and I'll have to uh, worry about the yellow light bulbs in here affecting the colors. Cause it, that will happen. If you only have like warm toned light bulbs, like I got my string lights up there. See that very nice and warm, nice and yellow and orangey. If you only, if you paint in warm toned colors, Colors, it will not help in the translation of uh, trying to paint onto your canvas. So, but if you cannot afford, let's say, getting a, a lamp with a daylight light bulb in it, then just just paint during the day, like uh, just like right, yeah. Look, it's daytime. It's got beautiful daylight streaming in, because that's that's literally the best lighting. <laughs> if when when I paint during the day, most most days I'll probably just like have the the blinds open, and I really don't need light from my light bulbs very much. But I, I might still turn them on just in case of the sun setting. But, so that's what I would recommend is painting during the day. That might not fit your situation. You you might only have a time available at night, but if you paint during it with with warm toned lighting, it will affect your 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 work. <laughs> it just it just will. Even if you don't think it will, it will. Trust me. It's it's, it's happened to me before. Okay, lastly, what you need to know to start oil painting is how you're going to mix your paint. You could just get paint from the tubes and go <laughs> you know, and spew it, spew it onto the canvas. But most of the time you will not, you probably wanna mix your paint together, especially if you wanna use your white, then like how are you gonna mix it with your white? Well, first you'll need a surface to mix the paint on. And I've said this before that I, I like to use oil paint like palette paper. I kept my last session of paint still on so you can see what it looks like all messy and gross. Nobody really cares about that. So I like using palette paper because it's just like a stack. And then when I'm done, I can, so I'm done painting with this. I just rip it off. See? And then so easy. And then it's gone. And then I throw it in the trash. And then I can I can do a whole nother uh, session of painting. And I like to get the gray kind because you can get white, but then I find that the white is very striking, very harsh to the colors on the palette. So I find gray is very good because uh, it's it's just like a good middle ground. The white, the white is very harsh. It's like a lot. And so any color when you put next to white is like, oh. Oh gosh, oh too much. So yeah, I like I like gray. I really I recommend palette paper. You can also get wooden or plastic or glass reusable palettes. You know the you know the kind of when they got, they got a little space for your thumb maybe uh, if you want put your little thumb in and you can hold it while you're you're painting kind of Bob Ross esque. Uh, <laughs> but uh, with those it, the reusable kind, you need to peel or scrape the paint off of the palette, which if you're working with acrylics, acrylics, when they dry up, you can probably peel them off of the surface. So, but with uh, oil paint, when it dries up on your palette, you have to scrape it with like a scraper thing and just like, 
me personally, I don't really like that. So I'll just take buying a couple one of these every once in a while. And lastly, that I'm gonna talk about, last but not least, you'll want a palette knife. I currently have three. I got a teeny little red one. Look at that, it's so tiny, it's so tiny. Tiny, a tiny little one, and then I got a medium sized one, medium, medium sized one, and then I got a large one. I, I really got these three so that I could really feel out which ones I liked more, but it turns out I'm like a little gold, Goldilocks, and I like the, the middle one the most. Just because I can get a nice like feel in it, like, an, like no matter how much paint I'm mixing, for some reason this like middle sized one just feels the most uh, comfortable. But that's just me. You can figure it out. You really only need one, but I, I have three because I, I, I wanted to, to try it out. But yeah, I, I don't recommend getting the, the plasticky kind. Just like metal. There's something different about, about metal. Really, you can really work at it without worrying about it breaking or something. See, so yeah, I think that's everything that you'll need to start oil painting. That's just the basics. If you want me to do a more advanced oil painting supply video, I can definitely get to that because I have a lot of other painting supplies. Like everything, everything I have in this tiny little drawer thing here is like everything else because there's like, there's a lot of stuff to like, if you want to prime your canvases more, if you, uh, stuff to add to your oil paint to, to, to make it dry faster, dry slower, there's, there's stuff like that. So I, uh, if you want more art supply advice, hacks, suggestions, please let me know in the comments and like in this video. I'm Ramija. If you like this video and you like me and want to see some of my work, then uh, please uh, subscribe and I'll see you next time. Hope this helps. Okay, goodbye.